Hi, my name is Joe Sullivan, and welcome to the Cisco Networking Academy. Uh, I'd like to take time in this video to show you how to use a, a tool called Packet Tracer. Packet Tracer is a network simulation utility that's designed to supplement what you read. Uh, the, the assignments in Packet Tracer are often in addition to the reading material, so they teach different concepts that may not be uh, explained in the chapter. You, so that's why when we read a chapter, we do the hands-on activity in the Packet Tracer. Uh, what we're going to start off with, though, is learning how to launch the Packet Tracer. So uh, as you go through the assignments, I have it set up uh, so that you can log into the cisco.netacad.com. You'll have your username and password assigned. Uh, you'll develop your own password. Keep that password safe somewhere. That password you could use to access cisco.netacad.com and basically see what I'm going to see here. And it depends on uh, what you have in terms of the courses, but I'll take you through from the start. You may see something like this, and this is an example of uh, this case. It's a course of CNT, C, CCNA 101. It's our CNT 101 course. Uh, what we're going to do is click on the assignments. I'm going to show you how to launch Packet Tracer. So because it's a software application, uh, in one of the intro assignments, you'll see a link on what you should do for getting ready. It says download and install Packet Tracer. You could put it on your thumb drive or you could put it on the PC. Uh, Macintosh PCs do not work, only PCs. I'm going to go back to assignments and I'm going to click on a chapter. Uh, I have it installed already. Let's click on, I guess, chapter 2 here. So I click on chapter 2 and this is the assignment. It says, uh, can you please submit uh, this this lab 2.2.4.2 or something thereof. Let's say you know complete and submit lab. Um, okay, I have Packet Tracer installed. If I click on this, it's a hyperlink. It'll launch Packet Tracer. It says you have chosen open this. How would you like to open it with? Because I installed Packet Tracer 5.3 on this computer, I click click OK, and it's actually going to open up the utility. So the neat thing about this is that uh, when I have Packet Tracer open. This is my environment, and I'm gonna. Ex you'll have two windows. One window is the instruction set, and one window is the workplace. Okay. Um, the instruction set here says what to do with the workplace. This workplace, in this case, is a blank canvas. Uh, so the instructions are gonna want me to create something out of this. So I'm gonna skip through. I kind of know how to read this, so I'm just gonna go right to apply what they want. Um, uh, selecting and placing devices. It says, uh, click and place the following devices in a horizontal row across the logical workspace with about an inch between them in order from left to right. So first thing I need to do is add a server. So being that this is like an artist palette, um, I'm going to choose the bottom down here and I'm going to scroll through devices until I find an end device that would be found as one of the servers. I'm going to click on this, this is generic. If I click on that once, you'll see how the cursor change to a crosshair. Click again. I just added a server to the topology. Next thing they want is a 2960 switch. So I go find the switches. I go find 2960. I add it up. Next is our 1840 series router. So I go find routers. 1841 series router. Then we add a hub. Then we add an IP phone. IP phones are end devices, just like servers and printers and PCs. So there's the VoIP uh, IP phone and a PC, finally. Let's do the old school PC. All right, and it says on the connections, uh, it says our cables can be different. And depending on which cable we use, we connect different devices. It's kind of like looking at the back of your VA. I was going to say VHS player. Look at the back of your VHS DVD player, and you're going to see different cable types. Now, the cable types do matter because the interfaces are different on the equipment. Uh, I don't really know what I'm looking at here by this kind of view. This is an icon-only view. If you really want to see what the device has, you can double-click on the device, and it's going to open up a new window, and it's going to show you what that device has. And this is the back of it. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So these are, in this case, this is the router. This router comes bare bones. It has these empty slots, which we can install cards into them. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is, I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Just keep in mind that's there. 
and the router also has the option to configure each interface. I could click over here and get access to each interface and configure it differently. It has what's called a command line interface. I'll close it out. And it says uh, basically it's going to use the auto cable connect. So I'm going to do that. It's going to auto cable is this lightning bolt. I click on that. It's automatically going to choose the type of cable and choose the interface. Now, most labs that's okay. Some labs that's not. I don't want it to always choose the interface because if I hover my mouse over the switch, I have quite a few interfaces. And I might want a particular interface connection to that switch. Um, the auto cable does not allow that. I have to use a manual cable. So I'm going to use an auto cable again. And just kind of go down the row with them. I'm going to connect the devices. Now, as I'm connecting them, you'll see different color codes. It's fine. Switches are on by default, the ports, like turning your light switch on. Um, so that's why you see a cable is. You'll see layer two, what we call activity. You'll see green lights. It's, green is good, right? Uh, red, bad. So red means you have no uh, line condition existing. It can't detect a layer one physical line, uh, any type of circuitry. So we're probably going to need to turn on an interface. Now, for the purpose of this lab, they just want you to kind of lay it out and use the right cable. So what I can do with the labs are interactive. I can click on this option, check results, and it says, Joe, you're not done. Please try again. If I go to the assessment items, um, I'm going to see that I do have some check boxes that I'm partially done with this lab. I've already completed eight steps out of 20. And the ones I've done, if I move this out a little bit, it says, uh, my server is zero, and the fast ethernet interface connects this, uh, the switch interface, fast ethernet one. Okay. So let's look for the server connecting a switch fast Ethernet 1, and the type of cable is correct. Okay, I'm going to hit close down here at the bottom. If I hover over, see this fast Ethernet 01 on the switch? That's up. If I hover over the switch, and, and the interface is connected to the server. Now, if you don't see the interface labels, that's okay. Uh, just go to options, preferences, um, show device labels, show port labels, show light links. Make sure those are clicked if you want to see them. Uh, but as I go through the line, I'm going to get more check boxes, eventually submit it. Um, if I choose the wrong cable type, let's go through again in our cable. See the, how it's solid line? The solid line says this type of cable is a straight through. If I choose the wrong cable, the lab's going to let you do that. However, it may not score the points. Uh, in, the, in the field, if you choose the wrong cable, the, there's nothing... No one to say, hey, you chose the wrong cable. It just simply won't work, or it may work depending on the logical uh, you know, status of the device. But if I choose the wrong cable, no problem. If I want to delete a cable, hit the red X, go over a cable, click on it. I'm going to choose a wrong cable, okay, uh, and connect to the hub. No problem. There, I got the wrong cable, connect to the hub. I expect to see it and the cable type to be wrong if I go to check results. Go to the second tab. Uh, here it is. Uh, right away I see it. Uh, from my hub, I'm connecting to the router. I have the interface right. That's the number of the interface, 0, 1. But the cable type's wrong. Okay. No problem. I'm going to go back. And uh, I'm going to delete that cable. I'm going to go add the right cable manually. And when I manually add the cable, I'm going to have options for what interface I want it connected to. Boom. I'm going to go back to check results, and I can see that I did good. Okay, I got two check boxes. We're on our way to finishing the lab. So as I go through, I could finish the lab, and, and uh, we have connectivity. So you can go through the rest and auto cable it and see what goes. Now, this won't communicate end-to-end -end because you got red status. You're missing routes. You're missing layer 3 addresses. This is an intro lab. It's just designed to get you familiar with the icons and how to connect the devices. But beyond that, it's really not meant for much. Um, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to show you the tab down here. It's called Root Simulation. And the Simulation tab is kind of neat because it, you can see the uh, content of the packets. Okay, right now, there's really nothing for me to do. I can't really simulate anything because I got down links. Um, you know, I didn't configure it. Uh, I'm going to take a minute. I'm just going to bring up the interface here, and I'll show you what the, the traffic is. So uh, bear with me for a minute. All right, I just uh, took a, a minute or two to configure a device, and I, I know what you know what they're looking for in order to make this work. So most of the labs they'll have, if you need to trace the traffic, it'll kind of be set up for you until later. Um, 
why you see here is the green lights that still exist, but with the simulation mode active, see I can switch between the tabs. Um, I'm going to generate a packet. I'm going to click on the simple PDU that's protocol data unit. Click once for the source, click once for the destination. You see, whoa, I get a purple thing here. It says ICMP. Okay, let's see what kind of protocol it's going to run. I'm going to capture forward. All right, you see how this ICMP is going through. All right, now you see some spam tree traffic with the switch. I'm going to get a lot of that. If I don't want it, I can uh, filter on STP. I say, I don't want to see STP. Okay, then it won't show the STP packets. But you'll see how the traffic's kind of moving across, you know, back and forth, kind of like ping pong. If I click on the color of the square, it actually sh populates and shows that uh, the what the what the layered uh, layers we talk talk about the OSI layers and TCP/IP layers. What's populated in the layers as it goes through? You see how it says destination IP, source address, and, I, and stuff. And yet, if you look on the further uh, inbound protocol data unit uh, details, you'll see all this. Don't panic. We're gonna get into this as we go through. Uh, this course, you're going to learn what the fields are, uh, what they do, uh, how big the fields are, you know, how to, how to basically how they get populated and such. Um, and this is the understanding of data, how it works through a network. Okay, so I'm going to click back on this. I can, I can go to the next layer and next layer, and uh, he he challenge me, and it's kind of like a little quiz for you and to see how you know what you know about the the item. So I could also click on this red one. You're gonna see a little different, uh, you know, content in there. This one's pretty straightforward. Um, but as we go through, this is what we call like a capture. Okay. And then when you're all done with the capture, you'll see it down here. It's successful. I can hit delete and I can restart a new one to go through. Um, that's to come, but that's what's called the simulation mode. It's very important. Uh, going back to what I said earlier on the slide, I said if I click on a router interface, for instance, um, and I go to a second tab or first tab in this case I can configure this router now out of the box it's much like buying a car or something oh you want uh, transmission extra you want analog brakes extra so it's bare bones and they leave it some space in there to add modules um, uh, we we're just looking at a switch module and uh, you know some of the what we call the switch blades on the higher end switches uh, each blade was twenty thousand dollars a switch was one hundred twenty five thousand this isn't that you know serious switch. This is for a small home office or a medium-sized corporation. Uh, this router itself, um, but I, I need to go over here and I could select um, different modules or cards to insert in the router. Here's a WIC2T, very common for asynchronous data. We're gonna throw it in there. It's a serial link. Uh, if I click on WIC2T, you'll see on the bottom it explains what it does. Now, I could, if I drag it up here, watch what it happens when the device is on. Says I cannot add a module while the power is on. Okay, so how do I shut it off? Click it. All right, now add it. Click it back on. Go to your config tab. It says I can't do anything. I'm still loading up, man. So it says please wait until finished. I said okay, I'll wait. However long that is, you know. Okay, brings it back there. And it's apparently done. That's a quick <laughs> software boot. Uh, so I can select that. I could see the module. I just say it's right here. Serial zero 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 and zero 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 one. Done. Um, so I can add and remove modules as you do. You'll see them populate the interface here. So it's kind of cool. Basically, what this allows you to do is you now have a big sandbox you can play in. So as you get your lab done and you're happy with the lab, go ahead and file save lab. It'll be like a PKA file, and just submit it online through the Cisco.netica.com site. I'll look at it. You can see when you submit it gives a time date stamp who submitted it and everything. Um, and if you're not quite done with the lab and you're struggling on a little bit of the lab, send me the PKA file. I'll look at it and comment on it because I can see exactly what you're seeing then. It's a very, very small file size. Um, and it's a good idea to keep all the labs on their thumb drive. But after you've done the lab, met the requirements, check results, you got a perfect score, um, then start playing with the labs and learning and exploring, create your own topologies. For fun, you can always go to samples. I don't want to save my network. I don't really care to submit it. Um, save my samples. Here's here's a scenario that they created for me. Here's a Linksys uh, device. If I click on that, it shows what you might see in your home office. You know, very small 
uh, for small networks. It actually gives you the configuration. You can go through and configure it and do so much with this. Um, I'm gonna click on here. Here's an here's a analog phone handset. Here's a you know just a a, a voice RIP operation. Analog phone, old school. File my phone. Okay, analog phones. Um, you know we're not you know playing with that in Cisco. I could click on a PC. On a PC, I have software services. I have my desktop. I have a web browser. Um, many things I can do on a PC are found here. Uh, to look at my PC, I could look at my IP configuration. I could set it all up here. This lab set up for me. I can go to my command prompt on the PC. I'll X out of there. I go what's called a terminal. This is for dial-up networking. A uh, whole host of things we could do. Text editor, I could go to my email application. And if I set it up on this network I have here, this all works. So I can actually get a web page from the PC to the web server I'm running. And I could run a web server on like a router basically. Um, so that's kind of fun to play around with that. These are samples. Don't expect to know everything up front. You know, this is a class that you learn over time. Don't get inundated with this being over complex. You know, start with the labs. They're designed to progress you from easy to more complex. And we go through um, in a sequence that should allow you to understand gradually what's going on. Um, keep in mind that labs, the material in the labs, uh, doesn't often reference the chapter in the book. So this is an addition to what you're reading about. This is like excellent learning. I'm learning what cables connect devices. I'm learning, uh, you know, straight through cable between a voice or IP device and my switch, etc. cetera. Um, no problem. When you're all done with the lab, go ahead and save it and submit it. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, you could ask. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.